Considering this is primarily a Linux channel, you're probably aware of Ubuntu Desktop, Ubuntu Server, maybe you even remember the Ubuntu Phone. And no, I don't mean Ubuntu Touch, the OS made to run on the phone, I mean the actual physical hardware Ubuntu Phone, the Ubuntu Edge Indiegogo, that didn't exactly succeed, but that deserves a whole video unto itself. Canonical nowadays is a relatively focused company. They work on the desktop space, they work on the server space, they have snaps connecting the two of them, and that's pretty much the main thing they do. But Canonical of the early 2010s, they were a very different company who had no idea what they wanted to work on, but they wanted to work on everything. Back then, they had this idea to branch the GUI outside of the desktop space and not have a different GUI for every single device class, have one unified GUI. This is a big part of the reason why Unity existed in the first place and why they were working on a Qt QML version. This was a part of the Unity Next project. In 2010, Canonical created the Unity project as part of Ubuntu aiming for a consistent and beautiful session level shell implementation. From the very beginning, Unity's concepts were tailored with a converged world in mind. Converged being one on everything. Where the overall system including the UI slash UX scales across and adapts to a wide variety of different form factors. One implementation supporting all of the different form factors. Desktops, tablets, phones, and even what we're talking about today, TVs. Yes, Canonical with Ubuntu was trying to compete in the newly developing smart TV market. As many markets across the world migrate from analog TV over to digital TV, a lot of people are starting to expect more features in their devices. We have these smartphones that have taken off, so why don't we do that same concept, but in a TV instead? Nowadays, it's kind of hard to buy a new TV that isn't a smart TV. I just want a big screen. If I want to make it a smart TV, I'll buy a Chromecast, I'll plug a console into it, I'll plug a PC into it. I do not want a smart TV. But during this period, the concept hadn't really caught on yet, and buying a smart TV was the more difficult thing. Now, it's not like some smart TV-like devices didn't already exist. Google TV, the predecessor to Android TV, was well in development since 2010, and Apple TV, I thought was a lot newer, had been around since 2007. You are probably wondering, what did Ubuntu TV actually look like? Luckily, even though it's a failed product, they did show it off at CES 2012, and luckily, Austin Evans has a video from back when it was first shown. This is Ubuntu TV. Now, apologies for the video not looking good. Um, this was an 11-year-old Austin Evans video. But if you've seen Ubuntu from that period of 2011, 2012, this is just Ubuntu. Obviously, it's more focused around, you know, TV-like features and showing movies, but it looks like Ubuntu. This was not a humble media center OS that you install on some random computer and then use it as a media center. This was intended to be a smart TV OS. You would buy some TV and instead of having this OS or that OS, it would have Ubuntu TV instead. And when this was first shown, it got quite a bit of media coverage. It got articles from TechCrunch, I want my Ubuntu TV, The Verge, Ubuntu bringing smart TV concept, more consumer products to CES 2012, ZDNet, TV for human beings, this is their tagline they had for it, Ubuntu Linux, The Register, Ubuntu Linux shop reveals TV for human beings, and Engadget, Ubuntu TV making its debut at CES gets short demo clip, and a bunch of smaller outlets all covered it as well. It seemed like a really exciting device that was getting a lot of free advertising. But this had two major flaws stopping it from going to market. The first being, this is not real. The second one, you'll have to wait and see. So from the Ubuntu wiki on Ubuntu TV, what is 
Ubuntu TV. It's a Unity variant based on Unity 2D codebase that's been adapted for a 10-foot interface. Basically, it's been adjusted to make it work on a big screen and not have everything be terribly proportioned. It's a proof of concept though, so everything might and probably will change. The plan is to stick it into the TV, not another box sitting next to it with lots of cables and another remote. Now, remember how I said this is not just a Media Center OS. In this case, it actually is, because this OS is not running on the TV. This OS is running on a Dell PC under the table. This is basically just a monitor. So when they have these demos here, showing how nice it feels to go through the interface, this is not at all representative of how it would actually feel on a TV. However, I will give them a pass for that because the whole idea of CES is to make those business connections, get some sort of hardware partner and get this running on an actual TV. What needs to be there is the software that is going to be run. Well, what was a demo slash mockup? What actually works? YouTube slash iPlayer icons are just placeholders. Indicators how an app could be integrated into the launcher. Only the volume indicator and clock are actually live. The rest are dummy entries. And these are live because they already worked on Unity. EPG data, as in the programming data showing what is, you know, airing on TV, uses offline data for 24-hour programs gathered from BBC and no tuner backend has been enabled at all. Video playback, hardware accelerated where supported, is live. That's because they already had a hardware accelerated video player that they just used in this as well. Metadata, synopsis, cast, posters, images, etc. for videos needs to be preloaded as XML and image files. So all of this stuff here is nonsense and doesn't work. All of this stuff here where they show these images of what videos are available, nonsense. All of this stuff here with videos actually being playable, nonsense, it's a preloaded video. On the Avengers here, it says expires at 9pm. This would be some sort of rental feature where you can pay a small amount of money and then have the movie, in this case, probably like 24 or 48 hours. Nonsense. They didn't have any licenses to do video streaming or anything like that. This is entirely fake. And they didn't even have a PVR backend or DVR or whatever term you want to use. No evaluation has yet been made on that topic. But Myth TV, Gnome DVB Daemon are definitely on the table. So all of this functionality you expect from Google TV and Apple TV, which were already out on the market, didn't exist here. All of that is bad, but would have been fine if it was three, four, five years into the future when this was supposed to be released. That's not what Austin was told though, and that's not what other people were being told either. So when can we expect to see this? Um, you can expect to see this uh, later in 2012. Awesome, thank you very much. Which was a complete and utter lie. At least in the way that most people would interpret it. Because it was technically available. It was available in the same way that Ubuntu desktop is available. You could install it on top of 12.04 on your regular desktop system. And that works great. You could run the exact same demo that was being run here as well. You could use it as a Media Center OS, and if you really like the idea of running Ubuntu as a Media Center OS, it did the job. It would play your videos, but that's pretty much as far as you're going to get. Maybe, just maybe, if Ubuntu TV stayed focused, they could have had a place in the market. The problem is they tried to compete with everybody and never delivered a proper product. Ubuntu TV has a box office built in, so viewers can browse the latest movies and TV shows online, buy and start watching in seconds. Not only are they trying to compete with Apple and Google, they are trying to compete with Netflix, and Netflix at the time did not have the negative reputation they have today. Canonical managers relationships with online services, totally fair, streaming services, totally fair, and content distributors globally. This is the part they should have been focusing on. They should have had a Netflix app, a YouTube app, and whatever other apps were relevant at the time. This should not have even been touched remotely.
And Jane Silver, the CEO of Canonical at the time, had a lot of interesting thoughts about what Ubuntu could do. According to Silver, the biggest hurdle for Ubuntu TV is breaking down all the walled gardens that content producers and rights holders have erected. Every studio wants you to watch their content on their website with their widgets and their advertising all under their control. Canonical believes there should be a single elegant interface for consuming media. This is a great thought regardless of the content source. Silver believes that Canonical and Ubuntu represent a reasonable middle ground as a relatively vendor-neutral solution to this problem. This is not a good thought. Canonical isn't in the media production business, nor are they in the hardware manufacturing business. They just want to be the OS for your TV. The problem is if they do this, they are in the content distribution business which puts them in direct competition with Netflix and other companies that were starting to appear in this space. While Canonical was certainly relatively early to the smart TV space, they were not early to the content distribution space. Netflix had been around for a very long time. If you forgot, Netflix started sending out DVDs. Like, they were here prior to streaming being a widespread thing. And the funniest thing about all of this is while the wiki said these features don't exist yet, and while the CEO was going around saying, we're going to have this feature, we're going to have that feature, there was a page on the Ubuntu website, ubuntu.com slash TV, that was just advertising everything just being here. TV for human beings. Everything you want in a TV, in a TV. I'm not entirely sure why that says it twice. Easy integration of broadcast, online services, and applications. They had none of that. Millions of movies and TV streamed over the web on demand. I guess you could do so in a web browser, but as for the apps, none of that. Modern broadcast TV experience, search, watch, record, and play. They didn't have search, watch, record, or play. I guess they have search if you search the internet? Yeah, maybe, technically? Shared screen experience with iOS, Android, and Ubuntu devices. I have no idea where this even came from. This is not mentioned anywhere else in their material, but it is obviously a shared experience with your Ubuntu device because it's the same desktop. Now, as you could probably tell, they didn't exactly have any hardware partners at the time. They didn't have much of an OS at the time, so like, why would anyone build a piece of hardware specifically for that device? And very quickly, people started to ask questions. A year later, ZDNet said, one year on, Ubuntu still to announce a single TV hardware partner. Whilst there was all this buzz about it initially in the media, there wasn't as much buzz in the developer space. So for context, here are the mailing lists. Now the mailing lists were the main way when their pages started to load, the main way communication was being done at the time. This is the Ubuntu tablet mailing list, this is Ubuntu TV, and this is Ubuntu phone before it moved over to UB ports. So, Ubuntu tablet, something you've probably never heard of because it's just merged into Ubuntu phone. This had 151 messages. Okay. This is Ubuntu TV. This had... 197 messages. This is over a span of four years. An Ubuntu phone. This had, once again, this is still going with UV ports, 24,000 messages. Ubuntu phone was just a vastly more exciting project, and that's why it's still going today. Nobody at the time, and nobody today it seems, really cared about Ubuntu on their TV. And it seems like Canonical didn't really care about it either, because they never officially axed the project publicly. They didn't even mention it when they axed the idea of convergence. Growing Ubuntu for cloud and IoT rather than phone and convergence. I took the view that if convergence was the future and we could deliver it as free software, that would be widely appreciated both in the free software community and in the technology industry, where there is substantial frustration with the existing closed alternatives available to manufacturers. I was wrong on both accounts. In the community, our efforts were seen as fragmentation, not innovation. This is why people have this idea that Ubuntu is made to work on a phone, Ubuntu is made to work on this, Ubuntu is made to work on that, Ubuntu is not made for the desktop. 
and industry has not rallied to the possibility, instead taking a better the devil you know approach to those form factors or investing in homegrown platforms. What the Unity 8 team has delivered so far is beautiful, usable, and solid, but I respect that market and community ultimately decide which products grow and which disappear. And as we can plainly see, phone is mentioned three times in the post. It's even in the title. No mention of TV. Literally zero mention of TV. Even Canonical is just not acknowledging that ever happened. Yes, it would have been incredible to have proper Linux on actual TV hardware. That would have been great. I would have loved to have something that open to play with. It just didn't have the support behind it, and nowadays Canonical just doesn't have interest in ever actually doing so. So whilst the idea of TV for human beings was nice at the time, it sadly never actually happened. Due to it having a lot of issues and having not really real demos, it never really happened. But maybe you think it was just never a good idea in the first place, in which case, let me know down below. So did you know about Ubuntu TV? Did you mess with Ubuntu phone before it went to UbiPort and became like its own thing? I would love to know. Have you ever used Ubuntu TV actually? Did you install Ubuntu TV on 12.04? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libera pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Bring back 2012 Canonical. They were very fun.